Now, two, two ways to read this text. We can read it impersonally or we can read it personally. And so here's what I mean by that. Um, we can read this text like we would read a newspaper. And I think far too many of us are guilty of that. I think it's why the Bible gets boring to us. Right? We, we got our journal open and we've learned we got to have a quiet time. That's what we call it. Sounds like punishment. You go have a quiet time with the Lord. Okay, gosh, I'm sorry. Just get in the corner and think about that. Um, and, and so we can read it in a personal way. We can open up our journals, open up our Bibles, and we start to write facts that are true based on this text. So we can read John 4, and we can take our pen that, that's got like um, something on it, you know, like Psalm 23 or something like that, and, and we can write in our journal that Jesus meets people where they are in their messes. We can write that out. Struggle about maybe taking a picture of our Bible with our coffee on Instagram and tweeting that as a line. Hashtag amen. Just fight off that. No, no, no. It's about me and the Lord. We can go on and, and write our next sentence. People really love and want to worship Jesus. Fight the urge again. Gosh, there's my iPad right there. It'd be so easy to click a great shot. People would think I was so godly. No, dial in. Jesus introduces freedom into cultural dynamics. These are all true statements embedded in the text. That Jesus makes people bold. That Jesus removes and relieves people's guilt and shame. And that testimonies are powerful things. We could write all of that in our journal. We'd close it and we could put it all in and we could go about our day. That's reading the Bible in a way that's impersonal. It's factual, it's true, but it lacks the courage of walking in vulnerability with a personal Lord and Savior. So let me talk to you about how I think we should read the Bible personally. Um, let, let me start by just saying this, okay? So if you can't follow me here, you probably won't be able to follow me uh, for the rest of the sermon, and maybe this is why just the first half of it's good. <laughs> we are all the woman at the well. Every one of us. So Jesus shows up at the well and says to the woman, go get your husband. She knew. I mean, it's, it's the most tender place in her soul. For me, he showed up not at a well, but after a football practice. And I didn't have five previous husbands, but I was a liar and I was a cheat and I spent a lot of energy trying to take advantage of high school girls with low self-esteem. And I broke the law and I was a drunkard and I gave myself over to debauchery and sinfulness. I, I just did what everyone else was doing and I did a pretty good job of it. If you can imagine my energy not redeemed, And so I'd just given myself up. And by the grace of God, here's my well moment. By the grace of God, it, it wasn't working. I knew it wasn't. Like I could feel that, that, that this isn't getting me what I thought it was going to get me. Now, that's by the grace of God. So I, my oldest will turn 13 next Saturday. So we're officially uh, into the teenage years. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Parents are like, get ready for those teenage I am ready for those teenage years. Let's go. I ain't scared. I know it's going to be confusing, but I ain't scared. And so in that, listen, I, it's by the grace of God that at 15, I'm going, this doesn't work. Now, I didn't become a Christian for another two and a half, three years, but I knew this isn't, when does this end? Where does this stop? Okay, I've tasted what the world has. It's lying to me. And so I became acutely aware. I'm a liar. I don't just lie. I'm a liar. I cheat. I break the law. I am not a good person. And I'm, I've got all that the world says that I need to be full and happy. And I am bankrupt and angry. And that was my well. And so when I read John chapter 4, I want to remember that Jesus asked me some very specific questions about my heart. And I didn't have the answers. 
When I hear her say, give me this water, I want to remember when my heart knew there was something more, but I didn't know how to get it. I want to remember back to the over a year that I just went to church with Jeff, and I would hear about Jesus, and I would hear about what he could do, but I just couldn't see it. I just couldn't grasp it because I had my own hurdles. I had my own doubts of whether or not he was good. I had endured some things that I could not reconcile with a loving God. There have been some things that had happened to me, some things that had happened to people I love in my closest family unit that I could not make sense that if the God of the universe was loving and good, that that could be reconciled with my experience. I had some significant hurdles, but my heart was yearning. I knew there was something. I felt stuck and frustrated in myself. I can look back now and know that was all the grace of God. But when I, when I read her say where can I get this water? I want to remember, I, I was there. I was there. Stuck in my heart level, intellectual running mess. And I want it out. I want to remember that moment of yearning. It's reading the Bible in a personal way that Jesus came and found me because he's the savior of the world. 